All right, today's video is a little bit different. We have two people involved in today's video. We have an artist and we have a producer and we gotta mesh them together. On this one hand, the artist over here has a unique sound that they wanna bring forth to the music industry. They have a lot of creative ideas that they wanna showcase to be that new game-changing artist. On the other hand, on this side, we have a music producer who also has a sound that we have to mesh with the artist sound, but they have some business concerns that they wanna take care of on their end to make sure that everybody is actually getting paid. The problem that we're having here is miscommunication. There's a lack of communication that's happening here that's kind of deterring you off the path. So ultimately this is causing some discord between you all and not allowing your projects to really see the best light of day. You can kind of see how this is posing some doubt about each other's capabilities in this aspect. So there's always going to be a need to reconcile the differences of the creative aspect and the business aspect in this relationship. If you can do that, which I'm going to show you how to do in today's video, then you can have a successful outcome and project that people will know and that will actually change the game instead of just pushing it down the tracks. Coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and let me say this. When I was a producer, one artist that I was producing for named Baby Rose, who I've actually done records for in this room right here, you know, we had to come to common ground on business and things that we would do. For what we put out, we were amicable on it. But other situations that I've had and that I've come across, this is always the common thread. So what I'm gonna say to you later in these slides, I need you to really take and adapt if you wanna have a successful outcome on your projects. Check it out. Okay, so understanding comfort zones is gonna be our first place we need to stop at and then we're gonna, gonna address this here. First and foremost, it's essential to understand what makes the artist and the producer comfortable in their collaboration. So for the artist, a supportive environment that encourages freedom of expression can go a long way. This includes promoting open and respectful dialogue about creative differences, which will allow them to feel valued and understood. On the other hand, for the producer, it's vital to ensure a sense of respect for their experience and knowledge in music production. This is where a lot of artists kind of go off the rails. Fostering trust in their abilities to guide the musical direction of the project can significantly increase their comfort levels and promote a productive work environment. So the thing is, artists come into the studio and they want to, they have to do what they need to do. They are the recording artists. They're the ones that will have to sing this song over and over and over again. But ultimately, artists, what you're trusting in the producer is to give you guidance to make the best record possible, not to deter you away from what you want to do creatively to the record, okay? But they're going to be there to get the best notes, the best phrasing on the vocal, the best attitude, the best antics, all of that coming out of your vocal. That's what they're going to be there for. When you bring a producer in, I'm not talking about the beat makers out there and beat maker YouTube land. I'm talking about a producer that will be there to guide you through the record. And a lot of times you may hire a vocal producer for this nowadays uh, simply because these beat makers on YouTube don't produce. If you can understand that artist, then you can respect the producer. Producers, if you can understand that the artists are really bringing their creativity to the game here, then we will be good. Now, I will address business in terms of contractual stuff later. Just hold on for a second. But I just wanted to get this together. Y'all got to come together on these two terms right here. Now, working with the producer sound is important. The next stage of the plan involves working with the producer's sound. The artist should be encouraged to appreciate and incorporate the producer's unique sound. It is a balancing act that requires mutual respect for each other's creative boundaries. By acknowledging the producer's sound and vision, the artist can enhance their music, thus paving the way for harmonious and effective collaboration. So, I'm back at the artist again. Artist, the worst thing you could do is to come in to a producer who makes one type of sound and push them into a different direction to say these words that I hate. Hey, can you make something like, anytime a producer has a specific sound that they make, telling them to make something like something else that is contrary to their sound is a little bit insulting, if you will, okay? I've heard this too many times where people didn't like my sound, but they utilized me as a producer, mainly because I had the studio. You know what I mean? But they utilized me as a producer 
to make something like something else that wasn't like my sound. When artists can adapt to the producer's sound so they can create something together, then they have a recipe for winning. Because a lot of times the artist comes in with lyrics in most cases. Or they may come in with lyrics and melody and they're trusting the producer to do something with their sound. But when they have to take the producer out of its element or his or her element to produce something else that is totally not their style, then that is contrary to what needs to be done here in order to make the best possible record. You kind of have to put everybody in their comfort zones, if you will, and work with and mesh both comfort zones together to make something spectacular. Now, taking direction as an artist and producer. Artists should understand the importance of humility and learning in the creative process. They just, you should. They should be willing to adjust and improve based on constructive feedback. You have to. Similarly, the producer should embrace the artist's vision while maintaining a balance with the commercial appeal of music. Why would the producer want to rely on some commercial appeal? Because they have to polish the record to make it presentable to the public. A lot of new artists nowadays want to leave stuff raw. And sometimes they don't understand that. I know this is art, but the public, you have to go up against years and years of catalog work that has been polished and polished to perfection. And you want to remain raw, which puts you in a state of lower visibility. And if you're in a state of lower visibility, then that means you'll still make money, but the producer really won't make anything past what you pay them. So they're trying to polish you up and you have to understand that as an artist. Now, it's about learning to adapt and evolve in response to the artist's creative direction. Like I said earlier, both the artist and the producer need to be open to taking direction for a successful partnership. That's just it. Now, here we go. Here's the business. Agreeing on contract terms. Finally, it's vital to discuss and align on clear, fair contract terms that both parties are comfortable with. Understanding the importance of both parties, legal rights and responsibilities and ensuring these are reflected in the contract is crucial for a smooth working relationship. This will not only protect both the artist and the producer, but also create a foundation of trust and understanding between them. Pause for a second because I got to sell this course in the right hand corner. I'm coming to that back to that in a minute. Now, always state the rules of the game up front when you start working with a producer. The basic questions that you can ask them is the artist, right? Is, hey, what are your selling points of your contract? Points, publishing percentage, um, upfront fee. Tell me what you're comfortable with. What, what, are you, what are you trying to get from this situation? Okay? And address it as the artist. I don't care what they say. It's the producer. They got to do the work. You know what I'm saying? You do too, but they have to let this stuff go so you as the record company can go on and do what you need to do. In many cases, they will be selling you the rights. So ask them what they're comfortable with. Now, on the flip side, as an artist, you have to be comfortable with the budget that they set and how much money they want to get paid, the percentages that they want to get from it. You get what I'm saying? And you also have to know how much as an artist, if you're an independent artist, what you're willing to give up in those points. Because that's coming from the master. Now, how could you know more about this? Well, there's a producer contract inside the 60-day record label where I go over this stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So if you understand contractual terms on both sides, then you'll know what you're asking for. And you always want to do this first before you even step in the studio because the studio is where the vibes are. But if everybody has an understanding that split sheets and, you know, producer contracts will be signed, money will be handed over, you know, business will be done, then nobody is afraid to work now because they know that it will be taken care of. And if anybody starts fidgeting on the paperwork early on, then you know that person is a slime ball and a sleaze ball, and they're probably going to try to get over on something. All right. So state the rules of the game before you hit the studio in this instance. That way, everybody is truly comfortable, even if you don't come out of there with anything. All right. You feel a lot better going in and doing it that way. Now, how do we ensure our personal styles don't clash, but rather complement each other? Through open dialogue and experimentation, you can find a unique blend of your musical styles that appeals to your audience. Mutual respect and understanding are vital in this process. When I was working with Baby Rose to craft the sound that she is now built on, 
we worked together for almost seven years. We crafted a sound and she began to build on it for others. Other producers started to adapt that same sound. That's just what it was. What if the business side of things overpowers our creative expression? Well, balance is key. It's essential to understand that while creativity fuels, fuels music, the business aspect allows it to reach and impact your audience. Striking a balance will ensure that neither overpowers the other. It just is what it is. Now, what happens if we fail to produce a hit record despite our efforts? Failure is part of the journey. Use it as an opportunity to learn and improve. Remember, consistent effort and dedication often lead to success in the long run. Listen. There's a lot of stuff that won't produce hit records. I never got a hit record on Baby Rose. or other artists I never got a hit record on it. And in fact, the only hit record that I got was this one, which was Jamie Foxx, Blame It, that you see in the back corner. Of course, you got the Grammy nominations, the 14 weeks at number one and all of that. Outside of that, I got another gold record that's not ordered yet from a group called The Cheat Codes. It's a pop pop group right so you know and i just got that one recently you know everything doesn't you know you don't always win you don't have million you know, everybody doesn't have a bunch of plaques they don't have a bunch of hit records but the whole thing is you just keep going you will get your success in the long run and i'm enjoying talking to you all through this youtube channel now in order to get everything hunky dory if you will with the business you're gonna need this i promise you this at this point because you're going to need to build that record label foundation in 60 days flat. You're going to need this framework because you need to set up your LLC and bank account flawlessly to be able to handle all this money that you're going to get from these hit records. And then you got to set up your records and publishing division to collect domestic and international publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15% because we got to negotiate a deal later. We don't need hands in the pot too early. I think you know who I'm talking about with that 15%. And then you want to utilize the contract templates that I mentioned earlier to get you in the game right away. That's inside of this course so you know what it is you're talking about. You know the business that you're working in. Everything that you see right here in the bottom right hand corner is covered plus much much more all right you will own this thing for a lifetime and then there will also be lifetime updates as well okay 275 or five easy payments of 55 bucks that's it i know you was asking that's it okay now after you're done with that let's develop your strategy book a one hour call with me down below in the description or you can do it before you get started doesn't make a difference point is you're going to need a strategy to win I got you covered on that. And this is your first time watching the channel. Get the free stuff below. Here's the winning notification right here. Your mutual respect rises for each other. Constructive communication ensues. Balance agreements come into play, especially if you got a 60-day record label. Creative harmony is created. Business and artistry balance happens. A robust local network can now come into play because now people know that you two are working together. I got to talk about that because now the artist and the producer is on the scene working together and they know that you produce for this artist and you created this sound. That local network is popping now for you. And a strong music community presence is now born out of this. The synergy is very, very important if you want a different type of success other than virality okay but you're probably here which is falling into a slump with misaligned goals ineffective communication and an unbalanced contract or i should just say business in period uh business period so you don't want to be like this guy here on the right who's huffing and puffing who's tired who just really hasn't made any money you want to you want to establish things before you get started and the one thing that producers can do before they get you know, to this point of exhaustion is just to address the business first with the artist. And then one thing the artist can do is just a, have a meeting before you have a vibe session, period. I need to make a show on that. Have a meeting before you have a vibe session, period. And you will ultimately begin to win in the creative space of this music industry. Music money makers, ultimately you need to get the business right. So producers, if you can state the business up front and artists, if you can state your business up front and state the rules of the game up front, it will make the situation a lot more comfortable. Stop doing the vibe sessions, reduce those, and then come together, build your synergy, and then you can deliver something to the world that gives the world a change that it needs. All right, music money makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Jump into the 60-day record label course below. Download the free stuff below. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace.